Nice work, Angel Face. There are franchises out there that you'd call long dormant, and then there's Kid Icarus. Though the series has lain fallow for two decades, it's never quite been forgotten, with the promise of a new installment flitting around several generations of Nintendo hardware without ever actually materializing. Until now. Kid Icarus Uprising graces the 3DS, taking advantage of the franchise's truancy by going where we'd least expect. Does it soar boldly or burn up under the searing rays of the sun? Let's do this! <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. You are Pit, a feisty cherub with an itchy trigger finger and an undying devotion to Palutina, the goddess of light. At the game's outset, you're doing battle with the army of the Underworld, led by your matron's vile rival, the goddess Medusa. Before all is said and done, though, you'll rub elbows and butt heads with a great many denizens of Kid Icarus's fanciful take on the Greek pantheon, which isn't afraid to go pretty far out there. Everyone shut up and focus! Though Uprising is formally a shooter for the most part, don't let the genre's tendency towards spare narratives cloud your expectations. From the moment you slap on Pitt's sandals, the story comes at you at a machine gun pace, with Pitt, Palutina, and the rest of the cast chattering ceaselessly for what feels like the entire span of the game. Every line is voiced, and you'll be frankly astounded that they managed to fit it all in the cart. Given the sheer scope of the production, you'll also be surprised at the quality of the script and performances, even if the game's breakneck pace makes it difficult to take it all in when you're actually playing. If you can stomach the stuff of contemporary children's cartoons, you'll find yourself chuckling along with the corny jokes and hyperactive performances. But seriously, thank goodness we don't have to go there, right? That silence means we have to go there, doesn't it? Now that's what I'm talking about. Every one of Uprising's 25 stages begins with an on-rail shooting segment before taking things to the ground. Palutina's blessings can only hold Pit aloft for five minutes at a time, you see. There are a few stages that feature minor variations on this scheme, but they're the exception. Whether Pit is a wing or a foot, Uprising is all about forward momentum, and the resulting experience is unrelentingly linear and directed. The flying portions play out like you'd expect. You're more or less along for the ride, moving Pit within the boundaries of the top screen and aiming your reticle at the panoply of enemies rushing toward you. Like any good on-rail shooter, you'll get a spectacle in exchange for your freedom, and Uprising's sights and sounds are suitably wild and exuberant. Due to the sheer density of their play experience, as well as just how much narrative the designers manage to cram into them, these on-rails portions end up feeling much more substantial than they actually are. It's a testament to their effective pacing. This is not what I expected. The on-foot parts are a bit more ambitious, though not always the better for it. They're generally just as linear, but with a scattering of hidden nooks you can scour for treasure, as well as a few gated areas you can only enter on increased difficulty levels. At their best, they focus on uprising strengths. Cool enemies with varied behaviors that demand you engage them thoughtfully, as well as an emphasis on skillful play so as to conserve your vital resources. When they focus on gimmicks, they tend to fall flat. The vehicle portions, particularly the tank segments, are at best boring and at times frustrating, and the same goes for the rail grinding. And any time you're required to maneuver Pit with any sort of finesse, like the game's ill-conceived platform sections, the shortcomings of the control scheme will be rendered unflatteringly sharp. There aren't too many of these, thankfully. Unlike a vast majority of games that feature a heavy loot component, Uprising doesn't rely exclusively on your insatiable hunger for treasure in order to keep you playing. There's a good deal to accumulate, though, and various ways to collect it. Upping the difficulty level, which you can do at the beginning of each level and with a great deal of granularity, nets you more potential rewards, though at the risk of losing cash if you die. You can sell off unwanted weapons or even fuse them together in order to create all new ones that combine some of their distinct traits. Your actions in the game are also tallied by an achievement system, which gradually reveals individual tiles in a series of grand portraits while granting you rewards for every piece you unlock. Stay focused on what's coming up. Most of the stuff you unlock in the single-player game can also be used in the multiplayer component, which features both local and online three-on-three -three team battles, as well as a free-for-all mode. There are cool mechanics governing the team games that attempt to address the inherent balance issues that invariably crop up when you can bring your single-player loot into multiplayer. Every time you die, your team's collective health bar takes a hit. The more powerful your weapon, the more your crew will suffer. The player whose death fully depletes the bar turns into Pit or his dark counterpart, and once that avatar is vanquished, it's game over. Partly because you're encouraged to experiment with different weapon and power loadouts, Uprising is remarkably addicting. The short matches lend themselves all too well to prolonged, compulsive play sessions. All right. It says something when a game includes special props to aid in its control. 
In Uprising's case, it's a plastic stand on which to prop your 3DS, so as to free up your right hand for the stylus controls. The default control scheme maps Pit's movement to the circle pad, shooting to the L button, and aiming the reticle and controlling the camera to the stylus and touchscreen. I'll control your flight path so you don't run into anything. Needless to say, it takes some getting used to. We surmounted the learning curve after a couple of hours, and at this point the controls feel fine, though the postures they require start to get awkward during prolonged sessions. The stand works fine if you play on a flat, stable surface, but you'll invariably jostle the unit as you whip around the stylus, which makes it a challenge to enjoy the game with the 3D slider up. Left-handed players will inevitably need a Circle Pad Pro, which isn't included in the package. There are alternate control schemes available that cater to lefties, but they're all pretty wonky compared to the default. I guess you wouldn't be an angel if you didn't do things by the book. The default controls are relatively intuitive for the flying bits. It's in the land portions that you'll have to work to relearn some basic game functions. In our experience, the camera controls are a little touch and go at first, though as you become more proficient, flicking the stylish to perform quick turnarounds and holding steady aim while dodging and dashing around the battlefield gradually become easier. Frankly, the overly touchy dash mechanics, which frequently resulted in our dashing off the edge of a platform, were way more annoying than the camera controls. <laughs> Divorced from all the baggage surrounding the controls, Uprising has some truly cool mechanics at work that encourage you to put in the time to get acclimated. There's a tremendous amount of variety in the game's weapon types, which range from quick-firing orbiters to ponderously mighty clubs, and a whole lot in between. You also discover a multitude of powers as you play, which you can bring to bear in both the story and multiplayer modes. The process of scrutinizing an enemy, figuring out its pattern, and executing an assault is immensely gratifying. And that's Uprising at its core. It's just too bad that you'll have to jump through some hurdles before you're truly comfortable. I wish my domain had a skating rink. Yeah, it's really great. What are you talking about? I don't see anything. It's a shame that the process of playing it will render it difficult to enjoy Uprising in 3D because a lot of the levels look stunning when the slider is turned up. The sense of depth enabled by stereoscopic 3D feels like it was made expressly with the on-rail shooter in mind, and Uprising uses it to great effect. The game is full of life and replete with charming detail overall, from the dizzying array of distinct weapon effects to the bizarre imaginative enemy designs. Factor in some top-notch voice work and an infectious soundtrack, and you have one of the best produced games on the platform. It really is too bad that it's so difficult to dig the 3D. Shut it already! Me? But you've been talking this whole game! Anything. Does seem pretty aggro. Kid Icarus Uprising stumbles a bit due to its uncompromising control scheme that puts just a few too many hurdles in the way of your enjoyment. Largely, though, Pit's comeback is a successful one. Though the task of mastering the controls might seem downright Herculean at first, if you stick with it, you'll discover a game that's brimming with gratifying play, and tons of cool stuff to uncover. Now that this angel's reclaimed his wings, we can't wait to see where he soars next. <laughs>